my channel. My name is Kelly. I am a science fiction and fantasy writer, maybe almost author. I have a story coming out in Martian Magazine next month. I'm also on the editorial staff for Augur Magazine and during the day I work as a product owner for a technology startup. Do you need to know all that? I don't know. I am not doing well <laughs> and I thought I'd make a video just to, well, just to like get back into things. I'm in a pretty bad writing slump right now. I haven't been in such a bad slump since my grandfather passed away in May. So we'll see where this video goes. I decided to sit down because we can do it old school back when I used to sit on my floors when I filmed. Um, I'm in a writing slump for many reasons. The first one, probably guys, you know, guessed it. I am still going through the emotional toll of my cat. So Crow Baby, you know, uh, how do I explain this? Like I, I went through such an up and down of thinking he was going to die, thinking he was going to live, and that he was going to die again. So I just haven't been feeling very well. But I guess I'll start like how this happened or what's going on. I'll leave timestamps in the description because I don't think I'm gonna speak very well. Essentially, Crow Baby went into kidney failure. When I took him to the vet on Friday, he said that he needed to be in the emergency hospital, but to go into the hospital wasn't going to guarantee that he was going to get better because no one knew what was going on. The vet offered me another option, which is to take care of him at home. So we would be doing the exact same thing as the ho at the hospital as at home except obviously it's just me and my boyfriend administering the medicine and the fluids so I decided to choose that option because the like $8,000 overnight at the hospital just wasn't very feasible to me especially because he said that the end result could be the same. I decided to do the at-home treatment and yeah up and down I was thinking he was gonna die and then he started really improving. I had a follow-up appointment on Monday. The vet on Friday said that if he wasn't going to make it on Monday, then there was no way even an emergency vet could save him. And so he was also scheduled to be put down on Monday. But when the Monday appointment came, I was very optimistic because I thought like he looked so much better, but then the vet, so it's the same clinic, but it's a different doctor this time because that Friday doctor wasn't in. And that was also my first time experiencing the veterinary industry as very much a business. 
where they make money from people rather than being like a place where you help your patients. Um, so she, I'm gonna have a few words with her when I go back, but she was framing it in a way that I wasn't taking care of my cat. Like she was on the cat's side on the surface level, but the bottom line was that she was trying to get money from me. Um, she told me, without running any tests, she told me that he was dying, like literally now. And I was rushed off to an emergency hospital. Not the one that she recommended, but I picked another one. And I did this finally because I knew it wasn't going to break my bank. And I was, he was getting better. So I figured like the hospital would be like that final push for him to really, you know, come out like a new cat. I picked him up on Wednesday and today is Friday, September 1st, so he's doing much better. As you guys saw, he's playing, he's chirping, he's eating true, that's his favorite treat. But the whole thing was such an emotional toll on me and especially the price tag. So even though the hospital overnight stay wasn't you know that $8,000 price tag that the vet initially estimated for me, it still ended up being $6,000 in total. The overnight stay at the hospital was around like 2,500, close to 3,000. So it just sucked so much money out of me. It sucked the energy out of me, so. And I'm just gonna say this once because I don't really want to say it, but I did start a GoFundMe for Crow Baby. If you guys, you know, want to help me out, um, it would mean a lot to me. And part of it, I think, I really believe that if anyone donates, Crow Baby will know. And he'll know that there are people who really love him and want him to succeed. And this isn't supposed to be a front where, you know, I'm saying it's all for Chloe because honestly, it's for me. Um, I paid all the expenses, but like $6,000 is a lot of money. If you like to donate even a dollar, that would mean a lot to me. So there's us. I feel so relieved that he's doing so much better. The feeling of a weight being lifted off your shoulders is such an accurate description. So that leads to my second point. I canceled my trip to Scotland, um, even though I could have technically gone because I got him back on Wednesday and the flight was Thursday evening. There was just no way I could do it. Like there was no way. I'm still giving him a bunch of medication right now. I would need someone to monitor him 24 seven. What if he needs to go to the hospital again? Like, what if something happens? Like, there was just no way I could leave him, and... I was so excited for this trip. I was... Like, after I organized and planned out everything, I really thought this trip was, like, destiny or something. It was fate. I was finally gonna go to Europe again. I was gonna see Arf Kwong. I was gonna see castles. The University of Glasgow with the cloisters. I wanted to see that so bad for Mia as well, which is my fantasy book. And uh, I see castles, the locks, nature. It was like a shiny red apple. And then all it became was this decaying, rotting thing. Yeah, okay. Um, so it was just very disappointing. I didn't get to go. I, I like Laura Lamb was gonna be there, and I made a whole separate video about Goldilocks. So it's just unfortunate. This perfect itinerary that I planned out so last minute. It just overall, I just feel like what's the point in putting in my best effort? Like I don't think I have agency over my life like I think I do but nothing is under my control so anyway I'm just having like very negative thoughts and that's why I'm in a writing slump also I'm in a writing slump because my fridge broke during all this chaos my fridge broke and I am honestly just too broke to get to take out or eat out it's not possible right now like I have no money as for writing updates I have like no writing updates I'm trying to use this vlog as a way to like get back into writing I think it will happen this weekend. So I haven't written in a little over, no, I feel like it's been a week and like two days actually, but that's a long time for me. I was so, I'm, I'm for my writing to shine, I really have to continuously do it. I use uh, momentum to really help me and I just haven't, don't, don't want to write. I don't, I'm in a life slump as well, so that's not going too good. I 
got my feedback from my critique partner last week but I wasn't able to take a look and I'm not in the right place for feedback right now so there's just no way I'm making submissions for Solar Punk magazine I'm gonna have to wait till November and that's just the way it is so hopefully like I can get some writing done but I feel like I won't write I just need to get out of the slump I think I'm going to read a lot actually that's the only thing that's been working out for me which is reading um, we had the auger pitch meeting on Tuesday so I missed Mondays because I was taking crow baby to the hospital it was really fun very exciting it's so cool to be on the editorial side of things to see how works get chosen to be published actually Carrie who is the publisher of CEO who is the publisher of um, Augur made a really good tweet. I'm gonna put up here. I have my phone with me. There are so so many factors that go into what or why piece gets selected and maybe I'll do a separate video on that. I mean that was really good for me like that pitch meeting was a really good insight for me as a writer as well because if your piece is not chosen trust me that does not mean your story wasn't good. There are going back to the agency thing there are so many things out of your control and all you can do is put out your best story so I mean I guess that's the same with me right all I can do is keep planning out these trips and <sighs> hoping they go through. Oh, ooh. also, my friends gave me a bunch of Indigo gift cards for my birthday, so I ended up buying a book. Uh, I wanted to unbox it in front of you guys. I'm so excited to read this. Uh, I feel like this would be a really good comp title for Euphoria, so I'm gonna open this right now. <laughs> Also, I just like want to say really quickly that I'm like so over summer now. Like, give me pumpkin spice themed everything, drinks, baked goods, I want to wear sweaters, I want to see the changing leaves, I want to read Dark Academia. I'm just over summer, like this was the worst way to end summer. I don't even care about the good weather, just like, give me, give me darkness, give me cold, brisk autumn air. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is not Dark Academia, but I just want to say that. Jeez, it's so loud. A half-built garden. This is a cli-fi related um, first contact science fiction novel, which that's totally up my alley. I think I kind of want to use this weekend just to like read. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching so far. I know I talked for a really long time. Hopefully this vlog will be more than just this update. So I'll see you guys throughout the video. Bye. It's the same day. I'm just, oh my god, I'm just using my iPhone right now because we haven't vlogged casually like this in a while. I'm looking at a very, very, very old project of mine. I've had this book idea since 2013, 2014 when I was the second year in university. So that was a long time ago. And I'm coming back to this one because I'm currently reading The Atlas Six and it has a cast of characters and I'm currently watching Lost and that has a cast of characters. I kind of want to like work on this. So this is not related to my short story. It is not related to Mia. I can't be distracted by old ideas, but I figured that since I've been in this like weird writing slump, I want to take a look at what I had or have written. There was a reason why I wanted to talk about this. I don't know why I decided to film this. Oh yeah, okay. I don't know if I want to write in a pen name when I first started out this channel like it was just my full name because I was posting like travel videos but I'm so scared of <laughs> the reading community actually the reading community is so mean for a bunch of readers we are brutal with each other just take a look at like Alex Astor, take a look at Christine Riccio. Every reader seems to be very critical of people who rise to publishing outside of a traditional method. I'm now just very worried about my identity almost, especially since I put myself out here on the internet. Maybe I'm just getting older and more paranoid, but like I did not feel like this when I first started making these videos. I was like, yeah, my name is Kelly. I'm proud of my name, Kelly Ty. I don't I don't like it when people or I <sighs> whenever I think about people like saying my name 
in a way that other readers have said other people's names like oh gosh alex asked you silk like i don't feel comfortable with that because i don't know you like i don't know the just there's just something okay i'm gonna go on a rant whenever people put themselves on mine it seems like that means it's okay to attack the person so i just feel like really worried about my dad is this why i turn on this camera i mean is this why i want to vlog i guess so because i'm like in my document just reading it and i see my name i'm like do i want to write in a pseudonym in a pen name but the thing is like my story that's getting published next month that's my real name i don't know yet why am I- I don't remember why I turned on this camera but yeah, I, just, I guess I just wanted to say that I'm like looking at old stuff and it's making me want to go back to this cast of characters just publishing just gets me so upset every single day as writers we already doubt ourselves all the time imagine drafting a book and then you're getting notifications left and right people telling you to like stop writing and it can't be easy. So yeah, I'm like, I don't know, starting to wonder if I should write under a pseudonym or pen name. I don't know. What do you guys think? So I'm just gonna read through what I had written. I'm probably not gonna write anything, but I think this is quite a nice exercise to get back, get my mind back into writing. Um, yeah. because the shadow is not working really well but I wanted to leave this empty so everyone can see this beautiful print I want to show you guys more in detail later I'm just a little afraid this is too heavy for this box this box here has um, all my cords inside so it hides it pretty well uh, I still need to clean this area but yeah I want to show you guys my prints this looks so good this looks so good oh my god okay i want to show you guys all these prints i really need to get frames for them but like i kind of like them on their own too with the white border anyway this one here is what a botanist would have in their backpack i wish i was a botanist so i'm trying to be a botanist by having this print these four are all from the same artist so i'll link them in the description um, I love animals. This is like a tiger. It's so cute with a butterfly on its nose. A house made of made up of strawberries, or it's like a teacup. It's very interesting. I love it. It's so whimsical. A bunch of tulips and a mouse. Tulips are my favorite flowers, and you know it's a mouse. It's so cute. I love animals. We have Meganium. Uh, this is the third evolution of Chikorita. Chikorita is my favorite Pokemon. And this lady at the bottom reminds me of my main character of Euphoria. It's just like spacey and flowery. I like how she has pink hair. My main character in Euphoria does not have pink hair, but I still, I still love it. The ones here are, you guys might have seen them uh, from my past videos. I got these two postcards when I was in Germany. Um, and these three, I got them at some fan convention when I was in university So I've had these for like at least five years now They're so cute, they're the legendaries for the first three generations of Pokemon And they're just so derpy and so cute, I love it These three, and this one up here is from Coco Glen, I believe that's their name I really love their prints, especially this one. It's like a girl with two lips and she's breathing into the two lips. I think it got water damage or something. I don't know. It's very light. I don't remember it being that light when I got it. Yeah, I love this wall. It makes me want to be creative. I love my desk. Unfortunately, I have to like work work on my desk for my day job, but if I could have this as like my writing desk, that would be so cool. What is Mr. Brambley's doing? Excuse me! Okay, um, we're gonna get started with writing now. It's close to 6.30. I feel really nervous actually because the 
okay wait what well, let's sorry let's talk about what i'm actually gonna work on i am going to work on my YA fantasy i'm gonna work on mia the book that i was talking about two days ago there's no way i think there's no way i'm going to write that anytime in the near future i think i will want to write it in the next 10 years but it's definitely not on my radar right now um but i thought or I still think it's a great idea if you're kind of also in a rut I recommend looking at old projects I think it really re revigor in re what? reinvigorate invigorate I can't speak invigorate something in you I just a quick update I don't know if anyone cares but I ended up moving the white box behind my monitor actually because I think it was weighing down too much like the organizer thing was. This Y fantasy I've been working on. I've been working on this draft since June. I have an uncompleted draft that I started back in November of last year for NaNoWriMo. I am not as behind as I thought. So for Mia, I plan on finishing the whole draft by the end of the year. So I'm going to show you guys my pacemaker. I thought we were severely, like seriously going to be delayed. But according to Pacemaker, we are still somewhat on track. So let me show you guys it right now. We're currently at 38,493 and it's projected that we are currently at 36,000 right now. So yeah, we're not that far behind, but it, I mean, look at it, it's really close. It's really close. Okay, I don't know if anyone noticed, I'm editing the video right now. I completely misread that pacemaker chart. I am so behind. I'm so behind. Oh, God. Just some super quick notes before we get started with the writing. I'm just procrastinating because I'm nervous. Um, the first is thank you everyone who congratulated me on the publication for next month under Martian Magazine. I am really grateful that I have such a supportive community. I am so sorry I haven't been responding to everyone individually. I will. I kind of just stayed offline. I've been offline since. Crow Baby's whole incident. I haven't like really posted, actually I haven't posted anything on Instagram. So I'm just like kind of taking my time, um, but I will respond to everyone. I really just don't have the mental energy to even converse with some friends. I've just been very uh, like introverted, I guess is the right word. It's very uh, into myself. So I will respond, but thank you everyone who congratulated me. It's so exciting. I'm actually thinking of doing some sort of like giveaway um, if you decide to purchase a copy of that issue it's only a dollar it's only 99 cents and they only have it in ebook format so i was wondering like if i should do some sort of giveaway if you send a picture of you of like the receipt and if you're subscribed or something like that i don't know what i'll do yet but i feel like that sounds very fun um, and I guess the second thing I quickly want to say it's regards to my short story I know I was just saying like I was kind of off social media But I'm gonna talk about Twitter right now really quick because I use Twitter more as like a, a news Because it has a lot of publishing related news on Twitter Also like every single submission sorry magazine is like open for submission right now uh, September 1st seems to be very popular. I saw that the editor of solar punk magazine says something very interesting. Just a little bit of context. Um, the short story that I'm currently writing, it was originally a microfiction that I submitted for a contest. The editor got back to me saying that she wants to see this piece as a longer, fuller version of itself. It's submitted for their actual magazine submissions, not for this microfiction contest. They do monthly microfiction contests. I don't know if I said that already, but the decisions for the August microfiction contest went out and she said that there are also many that I will reach out to for revised resubmit requests because I loved the stories so much that I wanted longer versions. And that kind of makes me feel like she really liked my story and wants, like genuinely wants to see a longer version to that. I think as an editor, and I'm learning this too for myself, is to push the writers because you see their potential. You know, I don't know too much about like traditional publishing houses and the editors there, but for my own business and for my work at Augur and just for 
in general, if someone asks me for feedback, my goal is to take your piece and explore all the possible potentials and push you to explore those potentials. Even though I might not know what those potentials are, I can see in the story and I can see the talent of the writer. And I think it's like conveying that, that you're for the story, you're for the writer, I feel like somehow that gets lost in like maybe the traditional publishing houses because there's like this idea that editors are evil, but I think a really good editor can spot where you can go. So I really like that tweet, I thought it was really nice. And she also made a tweet later, I think yesterday or something, she was saying that the magazine doesn't say that she should do revise and resubmits. She's saying that she does it for herself because she's helping the writers and in the end, even if Solar Punk Magazine doesn't pick up the story, she has helped the writer make the story the best version it can be and then you can send that story to another magazine. So I thought that was really great. I thought that was really nice and I definitely want to consider that. Okay, we will get started. I'm nervous. I haven't touched it, but we gotta we gotta make some segue. Segue? I think I mean headway. <laughs> oh god. How am I a writer? How am I a writer? I just found out something. I'm using my iPhone because I can't be bothered to set up. They canceled <laughs> the the magazine that asked me to do the revise and, sub re and resubmit. There was originally a November submission window period, but they have now canceled it to give the editors a break over Christmas, which I totally understand. But I just like went out of my way to look it up on their website. Um, so I feel like I have to submit my story for this window. That means I have 10 days to do it. Oh god <sighs> Okay, um, the thing is like I've only had a critique partner read I was gonna send it to two more beta readers, but I don't even think I can do that or I only so I only ask one of my beta readers to do it. Oh god, okay, this changes everything. I'm gonna have to pause on Mia. I didn't really make that much progress because I started thinking about the world a little bit. Um, and then that's when I started editing my video and looked up solar punk. Kerweebee. <sighs> what do we do, Kerweebee? Kerweebee doesn't like the camera. He gets scared of me holding any device up because he's a, he's a baby. He's a tiny baby. Um, I don't know what to do. Okay, we're gonna end this on a cliffhanger because I don't know what to do and this video is like 30 minutes. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will respond to everyone's comments. Thank you again for congratulating me. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.